Ah, hello YouTube. I wasn't going to make any more videos about prostitution. I've been thinking about other stuff really, but uh, I've just been looking at a video by The Peach. Uh, it's quite a good video. It's very long. And it's about prostitution. And it's got a couple of clips of my ugly mug in it as well, which is a shame. <laughs> I look terrible on the pictures. But, um, and it's better out of context, but that's alright. Fascinating, actually. Really interesting stuff. Anyway, it got me thinking about prostitution again, and it specifically got me thinking about an article which is in the newspaper at the weekend, which I've just been looking at again because it's online, and I'll put a link to that in the information box. And it's about this uh, this woman called... Hang on a sec. Uh, sorry. It's about this woman called uh, Claire Finch, who runs a... Well, she was charged with running a brothel out of a, out of a, a bungalow, a small house in rural Bedfordshire. Um, yeah, that's what she was charged with about a year ago, I think it was, and she was acquitted. She was actually charged with, as I say, running a brothel because prostitution in the UK, as in many other places, isn't illegal. It's perfectly legal for a woman to sell her sexual services. What's illegal are, the, are some various things around it, including, as I say, running a, a, a brothel, which means organising it and that that law was kind of brought in to try to uh, stop pimping really, stop exploitation but it, it, technically it could apply to two or more women out working out of the same house which is what this woman Claire Finch was effectively doing but as I say she was acquitted so I guess there'll have to be some kind of a change in case law for um, as a result of that or something like it you know because clearly technically in the letter of the law she was running a brothel, it was her house and more than just herself was working out of it. But, uh, as I say, it, she, she was found innocent, so that's okay. Um, some interesting things about that. One is a kind of personal reflection, and the other is, is just a kind of general observation about that. I mean, the um, I still don't know what my position is on, on sex work. It's still too complicated for me to really get the... A, a decent set of ideas to go on, really. That's what I'm thinking about, I suppose. But uh, I mean, this, if if you know if this story is correct, and I've no reason to suppose it isn't, then she seems like the, you know, she seems like the prostitute you would like to have as a next door neighbour. You know, she seems like a really affable person. I'm just looking at her picture in the pit and the screen here. It looks like a really affable person. She's got like reports from her neighbours. You know, she quotes her neighbours saying like. I mean, in which they enjoy having a next door and all that kinds of stuff. Now she occasionally bumps into her clients in Sainsbury's, and it's all very English. And um, uh, you know, riding a bicycle to church on Sunday, rural, bucolic England stuff. So you know, she seems absolutely fine actually, and be and she's a sole trader. You know, being a sole trader is, is something you can do in Britain. Uh, you can't be, as, as a prostitute. You can't be a prostitute as part of an organisation of any kind. You, know, you can't form a limited company, and you certainly can't, uh, as I say, be a pimp or work with a pimp and there's some ancillary things you can't do you know you can't uh, solicit you know street walking is illegal um, but working out at your house is fine and many people do I guess why am I talking about that oh yeah the, 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 the example the, the, I'm trying to find a point of comparison really because although I have met prostitutes in the past I've made a video about that I've never met this kind of prostitute uh, you know one who is you know by all at least by all the evidence that's presented here, you know, is just some nice, uh, yeah, just some nice middle class woman doing her job really out of her house. Um, the nearest thing I've got to that is uh, a friend of mine actually. She's not a prostitute, and and, and this is a, not an analogy, it's just a comparison. And again, I'll point to a link to this person's website. It's a woman called Cassandra, and this is a woman I used to go to university with years ago, 20 years ago, or more than 20 years ago. And I went to this to, to university with this woman, and she was very striking. And the reason why she was striking is she dressed even more weird than everybody else at the college I went to, because she was a witch and still is a witch, or as she terms it here, a village wise woman. She works out of a village in Cornwall called St Burian, and she offers professional witch services. Some of which are, you know, the kind of familiar New Age stuff. She does, as you say, Reiki healing and uh, head massages and that kind of stuff, aromatherapy and reflexology. But she also does the, you know, the grinding up herbs and incantations and all that kind of stuff, as well as performing pagan rituals like hand fastenings and christenings and that, kind of, you know, that whole end of it really. And she was an interesting person. I saw her. I hadn't seen her for years and years actually until um, a few months ago. 
and uh, yeah, I, I just yeah, met her here actually. Her, 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 I think it was her adopted son was uh, coming to university. Was you know, the same university I work at. So and she came along. So it was really nice to meet her again. As I say, she's still awake. She's still living there with her partner and doing the thing. Fascinating thing. Sort of a comparison, you know. Sort of a comparison. I'm not. I'm not uh, witchcraft is not exactly um, stigmatized. It might be ridiculed, and I have to say I do indulge in a bit of ridicule myself, you know, and certainly did last time I saw Cassandra. Um, and she and, and I hope that's okay. Um, but it isn't really stigmatized as such. I don't think people cross the rope and they see a witch coming. They just might make gentle fun of them, I suppose. And uh, I'm just wondering if that be the if that's the trajectory that prostitution is heading, you know, in a couple of hundred years, because you know there were burning witches here 400 years ago. I'm just wondering if in uh, less than that actually, but I'm just wondering if prostitution is going the same route, you know, in a couple of hundred years, or maybe even less, you know, maybe even 20 years. Um, these uh, nice middle class ladies working as sole traders out of bungalows in rural Bedfordshire, you know, rather than being um, pilloried will be treated in the way that Cassandra is treated, as the village wise woman. I don't know. I'm just looking at the prices that Cassandra charges for her service, actually. Hand fastening is from 75 quid, baby blessing 50 quid, consultations, and uh, that's, you know, yeah, kind of a counselling service, I guess, 35 quid. Not bad, not so bad. Yeah. Anyway, prostitutes and witches. Is there a connection? <laughs>